Hi everyone, Alice Brown and Lady V here bringing you yet another book haul. This one is a special one because it is coming from Asheville, North Carolina, where Lady V took a vacation. Uh, now two weeks ago, I think it was. Yes, yeah. two weeks and, ago. And uh, I'm going to let her explain what all she found and tell you all about the bookstore. So we went to a bookstore in downtown Asheville called Malaprops. And if you want some more information about my trip to Asheville, please check out our other uh book haul from Battery Park book, it, book yeah, that should, uh, last week last week yeah. so I will also have that video linked down below for you to go check out if you haven't seen it already uh, to keep it short and sweet on Asheville beautiful place definitely if you are ever in the area please 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 take about a week to go tour Asheville you can take half a week if you want but please take some time to tour Asheville it is beautiful, a beautiful place visit yes. either uh, Grandfather Mountain Linville Falls, Linville Caverns is especially gorgeous. You get to tour all underneath where they did the mining way back when. They no longer mine there very much, um, but they, they have a little convenience store, or not convenience store, but a, uh, a little, little shop. Like gift shop. Gift a little shop, gift yeah. shop with the, the gems that they have mined there before and still do mine. So uh, please check out Asheville, North Carolina. It is you got Biltmore State there Biltmore also, State, which yes. you went to, and it's gorgeous. It is, and it is a really rich in both beauty and history area in the state. So going on to our book haul, we stopped at Malprop's Books in downtown Asheville. Very small, little quaint bookshop. Loved it. Um, I was very impressed with the fact that they had somebody at the door who would not let any more than 60 people in the store. They definitely kept it to where it wasn't overcrowded, even as we're coming out of a pandemic. Me being personally already vaccinated and, you know, technically I don't need to wear a mask. I still do because I'm just, I'm just that cautious. But it was nice to know that there were a there was a limitation to people and I could take the time without getting overcrowded or feeling claustrophobic to be able to browse throughout the store. Mm -hmm. Now, I, uh, a nice little side story. While we were book shopping, me and my fiance, um, you know, this is a regular bookstore. The books are a regular price, and me being somebody who likes to go bargain shopping, I didn't exactly want to buy too many books. Yeah, you open the book and you see $12.99, you're like, $12.99? <laughs> exactly. It's not a dollar? No, we're not a dollar trade. <laughs> so, it, it was funny, I, uh, I walked around the, the store, and I ended up coming back up to him about 30 minutes later and I had two books. I said, okay, I'm, I think I might be ready. He goes, two books, really, for you? No, he's like, you know, this place looks like it's got some more books that would pique your interest. Why don't you walk around some more and see what you can find? You know, we got time anyways, we're not ready to leave. So he might've ended up eating his words by the time we were done for the day. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I walked around and I came back I had found three extra books, so I now have a stack of five books in my arms. And uh, he's like, I still think you can find more. But at this point, one of the lovely workers came up to me and offered to take the stack of books and put them up at the front desk. And they had these little hand printouts that would say hold for customer on them. And so she just, she, she told me about this process and took my books and held them up at the front counter. So. Yet again, I go walking around the bookstore because, <laughs> yes, there were a ton of books that piqued my interest. They really were, and I got numerous that actually piqued my interest that I did not even know were already out. So, I, uh, I come back with yet another stack of books, and he's like, okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy with the amount that you bought now. We, we go check out. So, I end up, end, ended up coming out with seven books. Out of this book haul so okay we have a, a nice little let's see what you got book haul to go the first book on our list is the witch's heart by genevieve gornicek i hope i'm pronouncing your last name right and this book is absolutely beautiful i love the detail this is a tale about a witch who has been punished and burned by odin the norse god for not giving him insight to the future that he wished to know you know, most people, when you're talking about future, they wish to leave it untouched. So that way people don't really change the path, of course, of fate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she goes to the far edges of the woods out of Odin's reach to try and heal because she has lost her power. She's badly burned from this. 
And somewhere along the line, she ends up falling in love with Loki, the god of, tri of trickery oh and mischief. And they have children. Those children later on have a secret fate that could be very conducive to the entire humanity race. Mm, okay. So it is a very interesting book. Again, beautiful cover. Mm -hmm. Interesting story. You always like mythology. I anyway, love so mythology. Yeah, I yes, know I picked that up. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I studied early on mm -hmm. in high school was mythology. mythology. Mm -hmm. I started with Greek mythology, and then I have slowly worked my way through Norse mythology. And next on my list would be Egyptian myth mythology. But I, uh, I have always loved tales of mythology, yes. Next up, we have The Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie Liu. Now, this one was very interesting to me. Um, it's a bunch of short stories about some very powerful women. The author, I have her graphic novel, Monstrous, and it is quite beautiful. I love the details in it. The lady that checked me out at the bookstore, though, gave me some insight that she actually used to write regular romance that I knew nothing about. It, I believe it was Marjorie M. Lou or Marjorie J. Lou. Um, but she, she, she got out of writing romance, mm -hmm. having found a passion for more sci-fi fantasy and action, and that she just couldn't follow the guidelines that most publishers put you under for writing regular romance. Mm -hmm. And so she has since transitioned, but you can still find her romance novels because I, I came home and did some searching and put one of them on my uh, Kindle wish list to check out just because I already like her comic book. Again, this this one is a high sci-fi fantasy, more more fantasy than it is sci-fi, I would believe. And um, I just I wanted to see what else she had produced before. So that'd be interesting. So she's been writing a good long time, then. Yes, yes, several years. And actually, when I looked her up online, her picture did not look like she was that old. So I think she was one Maybe to she branch out. Really young. Yeah, I think she was one to branch out into regular romance at a very young age. Okay. Which rock on. Yes, rock definitely. on, honey. <laughs> the next one on our list, I was super excited because I knew this book was coming out. I just did not realize it was already out, and that was *The Queen's Secret* by Melissa De La Cruz. Her this is a uh, a sequel to the queen's assassin which, which you already it, have right? i have it yes. yes i actually bought that as soon as it came out it was one that when i read about it i knew i was gonna love it i just i knew it i had to get it as soon as it came out i dragged my fiance down to barnes and nobles i bought the book <laughs> and i had it read within a week or two it was just it was absolutely fabulous i was actually a little sad that when i finished it that i had read it so fast <laughs> i knew i was gonna regret that but anyways, I when I learned that her sequel was coming out to that book, I was like, I've got to get it. And I happened to see it there at this store. I did not realize it was out. I knew it was coming out this month, but I didn't realize it was already out. I was just like, I have to get it. This is one I'm going to pay full price. Yeah. I will pay anything <laughs> to get this book. And so I went ahead and picked it up. So I'm very excited about this one. That will definitely be my next read. Okay. Now, the next two I got are some little cute beach reads, or what I would consider a beach read. They are, first, The Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. This is a girl who works in the family bookstore. They, they sell a lot of gently used books. They're all second chance uh, books. Obviously, why it's titled The Last Chance Book. <laughs> and across the street opens a brand new bookstore who sells all these new books. Mm -hmm. And who's gonna want to buy a used book when they can go across the street and buy a new book? You. Me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> Me. Because you know what? I personally think that used books have extra characters to them. Mm -hmm. You get a piece of whoever owned that book before. That is in my personal opinion. Especially mm -hmm. if somebody like scribbles little notes at the front of the book and you know makes little markings. You get a piece of that. You get the history that this book has personally been through. And, uh, but anyways, I, says the girl who will not mark any book in any way, will not turn the pages down, will not nothing. I mean, those book, every book she owns is <laughs> picture perfect exactly how she got it because she takes such good care of her books. And I can remember 
her loaning books out to family members, friends in the past. Oh my and goodness, when she got them so back, <laughs> she was furious because, oh my God, page 50 had a little turn or page so 100. dog one yeah. of my pages, yeah. Oh no, that does not I go was, well with her. <laughs> I was the one, probably the one and only child that was known for going and taking my textbook and copying pages out of it so I could highlight them so I did not highlight them inside mm -hmm. the book. I'd be known for doing that. Yeah, we, I would we've had not. a copier in this house for years because of that. I would never take a pen or pencil to a book, ever. That's just, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, in this book, long story short, there ends up being a romance that blossoms between the two people who run the books. The girl who runs the Second Chance bookstore and the boy who ends up running the books, the brand new bookstore across the street. So, it's going to be a little bit of Rivals to Romance. Yeah. But that would be a nice little beach read for yeah, me. Yeah, well, we've got a couple trips to the beach schedule yes. this summer. So, so I, I've got read. my books picked already yep. for the beach. The next one on the list, also a beach read, is By the Book by Amanda Slett. This one, the main girl has read classic literature all of her life, loves Jane Austen, Charlotte Bronte, Tolstoy, you know, all of them. And she sees the mistakes that the heroines make in these books. And she has gone through her life writing down these mistakes. So she herself does not make these mistakes. And when she sees her friends starting to fall for the same love traps with other men, she develops a safe guide for them to fall. Almost like and, a how-to book. Yes, to fall in love with them without falling for these same things that the heroines in the, his, in the classic literature have. Along the way, she herself falls in love, probably falling for one of the same things that her her favorite heroines. Probably I'm gonna so, bet. yeah. <laughs> but anyways, it looked like a really cute it summary cute. read. The next one on my list, I was also very happy to get. When are you not happy to get uh, get books? <laughs> I know, but this one is Dracul Dracul by I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, Dakari Stoker and J D Barker. I have another book by Stoker that is the Unt Dracula Untold. Isn't this uh, a distant relative? This is the great grandson of Bram Stoker. Okay. So in this one, he has taken the notes and journals that Bram Stoker kept while he was writing and traveling and even before that, his childhood journals. Apparently, he kept journals while he was a child. Hmm. And has gotten history notes and stories passed down from other family members that he has compiled into this story telling about supposedly how Bram Stoker came to meet a vampire and Dracula. So, this is a very interesting read. I've already started it. I'm only about, you know, 33 pages. As you can see, my bookmark's not very far from the front of the book. But I did the mistake in starting it after 11.30 at night and ended up staying until 2.30, staying up until 2.30 yes. in the morning. <laughs> Not my wisest choice. Plus, it's a dark tale, so, you know, couldn't go to sleep without the light being on nope. as well. <laughs> the last book on our list is The Deep by Alma Katsu. This one intrigued me because it is a retelling of the Titanic with a bit of a supernatural paranormal twist to it there is a oh. sea monster that has to do with all this interesting aside from that the write-up is very invasive i would not i don't know very much but i'm very excited to read it and find out what twists they put on the titanic interesting okay so you've got a large a large stack of stack books of here. books here <laughs> <laughs> it came from what is the name of that? Malaprops. Malaprops. Okay. And their so. link would be down in the description. Please, if you are ever in the Asheville area, give them some love. Stop by, visit them. They have a cute little coffee bar inside their bookshop. Wonderful books to pick from. Cool. Okay. We hope you enjoyed today's video of, of our book finds. And remember, every Thursday is a book haul. So stop back by, check us out if you like this video. Hit the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time.